Testing, testing, I'm just suggesting you and I might not be the best thing. When it was time to do the third record, I was nervous to get ready for that because I never want one album to sound like the last one. I always want it to be its own thing. I'm not ever interested in like recreating something. I wanted a big closer. I wanted to do, I didn't want it to be like the closer on the other album because this time we had a whole narrative story. I wanted the record to feel like a fairy tale. So I wanted it to be a really visual record. I wanted it to feel like you're watching a movie and you're feeling a story unfold. So the ending had to be like a real climax, like in a movie, you know, like a big battle or something. Did we get it? This whole video is just to get the shit kicked out of me. I had this crazy idea where I was like, what if it's all just one song? What if it's just, what if it's just like it starts at zero and then we'll still have like, you know, 10 or 12 songs or whatever, but they'll, they'll all segue and it'll just be one long thing. And I had had that idea before we did Fix Me. I had had that idea before the first album, but I wasn't a strong enough writer to do it when it was on the first record. And then when it was Masterpiece Theater, I still wasn't ready. And then ever after, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give it a go. Um, we'll record all the songs, and then afterwards, I'll figure out how to put them all together. By the time it was like September, they gave us a release date, and I hadn't finished writing it yet. So we would get calls from the label being like, okay, you know, we're working on the artwork. What's the track listing? And I'd be like, I don't know. I haven't finished writing it yet. And they're like, you know you have to deliver the finished album in three days. And I was like, yep. So I came in on Monday with nothing. And we just started going. We just sort of went section by section and we wrote it. Um, we recorded it as I was coming up with ideas and then mixed it right away. So I didn't even have time to think about it. And then we realized, oh no. What about the whole one song thing? What about that? So we've got 12 songs and I don't know how they fit together. The record was due in New York at nine in the morning to master. So it was like midnight and we're still finishing the last mix and we haven't even started working on those transitions yet. So we stayed there all night and sort of put together all these transitions. Uh, and then every now, I'd sort of work on one and someone would come in and suggest something or whatever, we'd sort of take turns. We did it, started uploading it at eight in the morning uh, and so it was actually already like two hours late in New York and I had never heard the album through because we didn't have time to then sit there for an hour to actually make sure it all flowed correctly um, which was kind of a risk because I was sort of like what if it feels stagnant and what if it what if it loses momentum at track six I don't know what's gonna happen by there like yeah these little transitions seem kind of neat but is that gonna actually hold people's attention is that gonna hold my attention for an hour or however long the record is um, and we just, had to, we just had to go with it, so, because we didn't have any more time. Matt and I and a couple other people went to the studio the next day and listened to the record through for the first time. And went, okay, you know, it's pretty cool. It's pretty good. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, we're good. And then we left on tour two days later, and I still haven't had a break. Here I am, you can take a leave me, but I won't ever be anywhere but here, see? Honestly, I, I feel really uncomfortable when people ask me to be like a role model um, for them uh, because I feel like that's not my responsibility because we don't know each other and like you could be a fan of what we do for of what we do which is amazing and I'm super grateful and and I, I know how lucky we are um, but I really think that your role model should be someone that you know personally and that you like someone that you are actually around who can give you real examples because anyone that you see on TV you're only seeing whatever they're choosing to show you.
When I went to rehab, which by the way I don't recommend to anybody because there's really nothing romantic about not being able to walk and being awake for two weeks. They make you do this thing where you have to, uh, you, you, you draw like a circle that represents you and then you draw all these other circles that are all the drugs you've ever done and you write and you draw a circle of how big each one is for how important it is to you. And then you do a second drawing where you do you and then all sort of the things in your life that are important, how important they are. And then you put them over top of each other and most addicts, the drugs are the bigger drawing. With my music was bigger than um, heroin was. I sort of at that moment realized that I couldn't do both. I sing because I don't have any other life skills. I'm still working on using the laundry machine where I live. And if I wasn't a singer, it would pro I would probably be an awesome homeless guy. Um, so it was kind of like one or the other. So I kind of went with the not homeless thing which for many musicians, those things usually go hand in hand, so I kind of got lucky. Thank you. You know what my thing is? I hope for the best and expect the worst in everything in my career, and that's true.